Hello all and welcome to the live that I'm having today. I am Ollie Matthews, health coach for some of the world's leading entrepreneurs. And today, today we're talking about that, if you saw my post earlier, that if you're someone who wakes up and you still feel really groggy, like you get out of bed and you're like smashing that alarm clock or you want another 10 hours of sleep, even though you've had your seven, eight, nine hours of sleep, if you find that also, you may be someone that you do intermittent fasting simply because you struggle to eat in the morning. Like you eat and you feel sick. Uh, also as well, you're not ready to go until you've had your coffee first thing in the morning. You just feel like a zombie or you have slumps of energy throughout the day. That it's gonna be a sign that your brain is not functioning as good as it could. Whereas you're probably having issues with high and low blood sugar, first hyperglycemic and hypoglycemic, and potentially something called reactive hyperglycemia. Now I'm gonna continue this video in my free Facebook group. So if I could see how I actually switched some of them off, I'm gonna continue this in my free Facebook group, The Stress Stomach Solution. The link is in the comments, so or in the actual description. So if you wanna finish watching this video, then click over to go over to the stress stomach solution and I'll be continuing it in there in one moment. Now, those streams have been switched off now. So we are here exclusively in the stress stomach solution group. Now, as I said, that if you're someone that you wake up and you just feel like you need more and more sleep or you feel really, really groggy and if you eat food, you feel sick first thing in the morning. So therefore you fast, you skip breakfast, you need to have coffee, you have slumps of energy throughout the day or you eat food and it changes the way you feel, then chances are there's something going on with your blood sugar levels, both high and low blood sugar levels. And we wanna look deeper into what is causing this and every single client of mine that I work with, we look at testing blood sugar levels. Now, it's all well and good to say you need to eat exactly this food or exactly that food in order to get a good diet, as we say. But every single person is an individual. And that's how we have to look at every single person, just like that, as an individual. So when I start working with someone it might be that they've tried this diet in the past and it's worked well for them. Or they've tried this diet in the past and that's worked well for them. They've gone to the fasting route, the keto route, the vegan route. But something underlying is going on because their brain function isn't where they want it to be. It's not at that position where they actually want it to be. And I have six steps, actually it's five steps, the sixth step is where we wanna maintain. That when I work with clients, we wanna to get to this healthy maintenance phase, the sixth step. And uh, they are the Mars 270 there. I don't know who said that, um, but yep, we've got the Mars and then we've got the winterized ones. And then these are kind of cool ones that one of my clients got for me, which is pretty epic. So if you do wanna be a client, do realize that I can be bribed into uh, lower prices <laughs> with custom sneakers. Um, but yeah, like when, when we actually look at working with people, we wanna get to this healthy maintenance phase. And that is the place where we can really simply go for down that calories in, calories out to a degree route, manage stress, everything is working properly and weight loss is easy. Brain function is easy. Sleeping through the night is easy. It's super, super easy. But in order to get there, we have to have good cellular health. So if we get to healthy maintenance, we have to work on cellular health. And to get good cellular health, we have to work on how our body detoxifies. Not taking seven days of uh, detoxification supplements or anything like that or all these sorts of things. Actually working on your body's detoxification systems so it can eliminate toxins. And in order to do that, we have to go to stage three, which is actually being able to mobilize the toxins. Now, so many people, women notoriously, are a little bit worse than men with this is that we cannot eliminate those toxins. We can't get that fourth stage. And in the third stage, I always describe it as, like when you go to the seafront and you're in the arcade, uh, arcade, or amusement arcade, sorry, and you have those claws, the grabbers, that so many people can pick up these toxins and move them across and drop them down somewhere else in the machine. But it's very hard for people to actually get them down to that chute and eliminate them. 
And that is what the problem happens is when we go to detoxify and our body isn't ready. Now to be able to eliminate, to mobilize and filtrate and drain the toxins, we have to have good digestive health. We have to have good gut health, good microbiome health. We have to have good digestion. So if you're finding yourself being sluggish, you're being bloated, like randomly bloated, then chances are we want to look deeper into those digestive support. And the first thing that I look at, in fact, I say the first thing, like the first three are what we look at altogether, leading on to detoxification, leading on to cellular health and leading on to healthy maintenance. But the first thing we have is neurological health. We have to make sure your neuroendocrine endocrine system, can't even say it, is working well. So if you're suffering from brain fog, if you're waking up groggy, if you're waking up through the night, you've got these symptoms that we said about that you're just not the real you until you have your coffee, you need those stimulants, then we wanna look deeper into your health and what is actually going on. Now, one of the problems I see multiple times with Western medicine and with the actual modern medicine side that approach we take rather than going down the holistic or the functional route, whichever way you wanna look at is that most people look at the body in systems. We have a problem in the system, but we need to go back further than that. So we look at like, um, we can go further back, but say we start at a cell. When we have a cell, multiple cells make up tissue. Multiple tissues make up an organ. Multiple organs make up a system, and then your systems make your human organism or your human being. But most of the times, Western medicine will look at the system and the symptom that is coming through with the problem. So we look at um, thyroid function, for example, and I'll do some deeper stuff on this, that most thyroid function is not down to the thyroid gland being a problem. So people get put onto thyroxine, people get put onto different drugs when actually it's your adrenals. But then what is causing the adrenals to have this symptom that is knocking on the effect of your thyroid function to be low or to be high, whatever it is. And we have to look deeper into it, going from the cells to the tissue, to the organ, to the system, to the organism, and it sounds really complicated, but there are certain things that we can do that most of the things that go on and that I work with with clients, that it can be simple. People pay me money to do the simple stuff. The problem is, is that too many people have done the complicated, expensive stuff over and over that we forget and lose some of the belief, then the simple stuff will work. When we're made accountable that managing stress, getting hydrated, getting good sleep, actually works so there are certain things that you can do potentially that are going to help you whether you want to do them or not that's another question but you want to really look if stress management has been a problem we want to look at avoiding adrenal stimulants so like things that stimulate your adrenals things like concentrated sugars things like caffeine like it, this is decaf but i've done a lot of work on my adrenals even having decaf coffee still has around 50, 60% caffeine. So it's kind of a myth with the decaf. You can look at green tea potentially, depending on how um, far gone your adrenals are or how stressed you are. But if you're regularly getting problems with the things that we spoke about, you're regularly bloating, regularly getting outbursts of acne and things, then we're probably not gonna wanna actually even have decaf or have green tea. Look for naturally caffeine-free teas, things like your rooibos teas, your red bush. Um, peppermints, things like this are gonna be naturally caffeine free. Then we go on to things such as nicotine, which I've never smoked. So honestly, like, I don't know how hard it is to give up, but I've heard it's massively hard to give up when you look at the actual connectivity on a chemical level as to what nicotine does, then it's obvious there's an addiction there. So nicotine is a stimulant. So if you're having, if you're smoking and things like that, but even if you're having nicotine gum, that is still going to be a stimulant. So cut back on it at least a little bit. And alcohol, this is this is a sore subject for some people, but honestly, that multiple times people I see are drinking so much alcohol. It's not to say cut it out completely. I totally understand that with the people I work with, entrepreneurs that I work with, you go to a mastermind. And some of the best conversations, believe me, I've had some of the best conversations under the influence of alcohol, but some of the best conversations you have are not at the presentations. They are afterwards in the bar when you're being yourself, when the defenses are down. So I'm not saying to people, cut alcohol out completely. Yes, if your body is that far gone, that stressed and in different levels, and we'll get into the levels of adrenal stress next week when we talk about thyroid stuff, but 
if your body is that far gone, you may want to cut alcohol out completely for a bit to focus on building your body back up, allowing your body to be able to detoxify, allowing your body to be able to get good gut health and microbiome health. And then we go on to looking at foods you are allergic to. Too many times I see people that you say you're allergic to a food or you're intolerant to a food. There's a difference between an allergy and intolerance, but you're intolerant to a food. Oh, I, I feel crap when I eat bread. So why are you still eating bread? Like seriously, when it comes to this, like if you feel bad when you eat a food, stop eating that food. Now, I understand that some of the undiagnosed intolerances or allergies we don't know about and unfortunately it, it's what I would say that we can go down food testing routes we can go down testing uh, intolerance tests and stuff like that but most of the time our immune system is that under pressure by the time we have these symptoms that doing an immune test will not give you accurate results because your immune uh, uh, intolerance test will not give you accurate results because your immune system is so bogged down under pressure that it's just not going to give the immune response that we need. So it's going to be very, very inaccurate. So what you could do is an elimination diet where we look to cut certain foods out and then we start putting them back in and monitor symptoms, monitor how you're feeling, monitor your blood glucose, monitor your sleep and all these different things. And again, when we have foods we are allergic or reactive to or intolerant to, whatever you want to say, we get a histamine release from the body. And histamine is it's a stimulant. Histamine is a stimulant on our adrenals, which is gonna cause other problems in the body. Then we can look at things like partially hydrogenated fats, trans fats, and highly processed fats. So if in a lot of processed food, then that is gonna inhibit adrenal hormone synthesis and things going on in the body. Uh, another thing being artificial sweeteners, uh, even having Truvia for an artificial sweetener is still going to have look at do some damage. Yes, we've said artificial sweeteners aren't that bad in theory when it comes to insulin levels and so on, but they have an impact on the gut microbiome. So if you're struggling severely with these things, then you're going to want to look deeper into that. Low quality sleep being something to look at and like why are we having low quality sleep morning and evening routines and I work with that with clients. And lastly, the biggest thing that I've had to juggle over the years from coming from a bodybuilding background is overtraining. Too many people overtrain and push too hard in the gym and don't realize there's a difference between fitness and health. You can be very fit without being healthy, but is health actually your goal? Do you wanna improve your brain function? Do you wanna improve your body composition, improve your sleep, improve your confidence, reduce anxiety, reduce bloat, and reduce that sluggishness feeling? Probably the answer is yes. Or do you just want to train hard, start to look a little bit better, but make all those other things worse? Believe me, I've competed in bodybuilding seven times. And that, when you're in that situation, you, you would push all this stuff to the side and say, yeah, I want this. I want to be shredded and all this stuff. But this health side feels awesome. It's gonna bring so much more to the table with your business, with your relationships, with your friends and family, uh, and so on. So honestly, I would look deeper. Oh, we're having a connection issue. Don't know what's having a connection issue. But anyway, I would look deeper into those things. So look at how much processed concentrated sugars you have and artificial sweeteners, looking at your sleep quality, your overtraining, caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, all these things allergic foods, hydrogenated fats, all, all these things to look deeper into, start testing your blood glucose levels. They should be between 4.2 and 4.9 on the fasted state, or if you're in the US, 80 and 90, and just start to give yourself some more time. If you need help with this stuff, seriously, if you need help with this stuff, drop me a message, and I can look to see how we can work on a one-to-one -one basis in order to help you clear up these things that you're having, these problems that you're having, and so on. But thank you for watching. Massively appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And uh, if for some reason this stream has gone, I think there's been a problem with the stream. If there has been a problem with the stream, I'm recording the video as well. So I will just upload it once again into the group in full so you can see the whole thing from start to finish. But thank you for watching. If you want to talk further about coaching with me, simply drop me a message, ollie at ojhealth.com 
or go to ojayhealth.com and click on the Let's Chat button and we will book in a time to have a call. Have a great day.